At the start of the Trailer Park Boys, we meet the main antagonist of this story, the angry but fairly sober-minded Jim Leahy, the park supervisor and an ex-cop who spends his days in a constant battle against Ricky, Julian, and to a lesser extent, Bubbles and the other quote-unquote shit moss, Randy, of the park. But as you know, later in the series, Leahy goes beyond an angry drunk and far beyond an angry old man, with him at the end of season 11 threatening to drown Bubbles in a lake at gunpoint, and at the end of season 5, him bringing in a group of thugs to kill the boys. But what one scene exactly did he go from Jim Leahy, trailer park supervisor, to Jim Leahy, the liquor? Well, as people always pose and rehash the question of when did Walter White become Heisenberg, today I'm gonna ask, and then answer the question, when did Jim Leahy become the liquor? In season 1, Leahy is a closeted gay, mustachioed old man who still tightly holds on to his police officer past. He even consistently uses a little beacon light when patrolling the park, and also uses police codes when talking to Randy. 10-8. You got a 10-8 there? 10-8, you got a 10-2? Along with that, season 1 Leahy doesn't even really drink. He's sober as a dog. Oh, never mind. He's sober as a... let's say a squirrel. Yeah. But as Leahy plays policeman with Randy, he tries desperately to succeed in the ongoing battle against the boys, with multiple attempts being made to get the upper hand, or at the very least rein them in. But no matter how hard he tries, Leahy can't do a single thing successfully. For example, he tries to search cars that enter the trailer park, but they just drive by him. He tries to blackmail Ricky out of the park, Julian finds out he's gay and reverse blackmails him. So Leahy gets an entire season of minor failures, until the end of course, when he gets the boys thrown in jail for a smidge under six months in the middle of Ricky's wedding, giving him a solid feeling of joy after our first of many seasons of pain. Shit moss, Randy. Shit moss? Shit moss. They started off as tiny little shit larva, Randy, and then they grew into shit of pillars, a pandemic of shit of pillars. Everywhere you look, Randy, shit of pillars. They almost drove me over the goddamn edge, boy. I tried to exterminate them, I tried to put an end to the shit of pillars life cycle, but I failed. And now, shit moth, Randy. After his half-year escape from the boys, Leahy once again has to return to his battle with them. But after getting them sent to prison, Leahy had been, and I quote, Drinking like a fucking fish and everybody here wants some fire because you let the park go all to shit. Drinking like a fish. He has begun his metamorphosis to becoming the liquor in a way I think is interesting. As although the boys ruin his life, without them, he turned to the booze to occupy his days. An important detail about Season 1 Leahy is that he was essentially hands-off with the actual arresting. He'd basically wait for the boys to do something, then call the cops. But here in Season 2, he began a trend he'll continue throughout the entire series. That trend, of course, being that he'll do a lot of the evidence and framing work himself before calling the cops. But prior to Leahy doing what will ultimately send the boys to prison yet again, he spends a majority of the season achieving failure after failure. For example, Leahy sends Randy undercover, he gets found out. Leahy sets up a raid of the boys' trailer, they switch the address. But in the end, either way, Leahy wins. He attempts to tow their dope-filled trailer, in turn leading to the boys driving off with it, crashing it, and a team of cops capturing and arresting Ricky and Julian, ending season 2 with another few months in prison for the boys, and another few month long break for Leahy's damaged psyche. Shit hogs. Big, dirty shit hogs. They're coming, Bubbles. They're flying in low. They're swooping down, shitting on people, and dragging them off to the big shit nest. Now, season one and two had been relatively alright for Leahy. He ends the seasons with a win and has a healthy mix of little wins and little losses. But season three is, well, it's just pure torture for the man. 
Every single episode after number two is just loss after loss after loss, pushing Leahy closer and closer to his breaking point in episode seven. For example, episode three, Leahy loses a chance at sending the boys to jail. Episode four, he calls a big rapper to deal with J-Rock and the boys, but ends with J-Rock befriending the guy. Episode five, Leahy tries to steal a chance for Bubbles to go on stage with Rush and for the boys to get into a concert. In the end, Bubbles goes on stage anyway, and the boys get in the concert anyway. And episode six, one of the absolute biggest sets of losses so far happens. Leahy's trailer gets driven through and is left nearly totally destroyed. And then right after that, he gets outed to everyone as gay. We're gay. I'm gay. Yeah. Something he's tried so hard to hide, even giving up a chance to get rid of Ricky, as to not expose his relationship with Randy. As the man himself says, Julian, everybody knows I'm gay. Like 10 out of 10 drunk is when the whole universe and everything, it's like when they used to do that LSD shit, you know, where all of a sudden you can see the molecules in the air, that's 10 out of 10 drunk. In the episode right before the season finale, Leahy has been outed as gay. His home was destroyed, and the moment he truly undergoes a transformation and becomes the liquor happens. He sits in his chair watching the men who make his life a living hell. On the day of the anniversary, he lost his dream job and was booted off the police force. And as he sits there sinking into his drink, Ricky the ultimate bane of his life and the largest cause for all his pain, hits a ball into his recently destroyed home, which was also an indirect result of Ricky. The ball shatters the glass to his old policeman's uniform, and as the uniform was once again released under the world by the shattering of the glass, the liquor was released back into Leahy via the shattering of his weakened psyche. I believe the entire season was set up like this purposefully. They spent the whole season putting more and more pressure on Leahy with each loss. And after the uniform case is shattered, Leahy is finally broken. He suits up and heads out. In an interesting moment, he actually seems more sober than ever. As he steps out and the boys make jokes about the very tender situation of his recently revealed homosexuality, Were you and Randy rehearsing for one of those plays you're always in? He ignores it. He gets in his car and drives off to load up on liquor. After doing so, Leahy swaggers around the park with his old confidence and a seemingly larger body because of it. With some interesting camera work here, making him look way taller than Ricky and Julian, despite them both having about 3 inches on him. And although he's as drunk as ever, he walks around eerily sober as he smashes stuff, threatens people, and even goes so far as to imprison Ricky and Julian in a makeshift jail. But as usual for this season, the episode ends with Leahy losing. He gets tased, and in a very sad moment, his old police badge is confiscated. But in an even worse and somewhat emasculating moment, Julian, the man who he imprisoned, was going to torture and fight with nearly every day, took pity on him, and managed to get then return his badge, even if it was just to get the ball back. Which, if anything, really adds to the emasculation of this moment, as the badge, a symbol for a job Leahy took so much pride in and longs for every day, is equal in value to a $2 ball to the people that stole it from him. And at the end of the season, it looks like Leahy is about to get smiled upon by Lady Luck, and he'll be able to get the boys put away. But sadly, in the end, he gets tossed in prison for a crime Ricky committed. And after he gets taken away, Ricky swoops in and takes the job of park supervisor that Leahy loves so much. In a well done parallel to when the boys caused Leahy to lose his original position as a cop all those years ago. Um, uh, I lost 20 pounds this summer doing stone work, so I feel physically able. I'm 66 years old and I hope I have a couple more years. So yes, Leahy in this scene finally transitioned and became the liquor we know and love, becoming drunker and drunker as we move farther into the future. With half of season 4, Leahy is stumbling about before going haywire and threatening to blow Ricky's brains out. But as he evolves and grows, Leahy becomes more and more deranged. 
the liquor totally owns him. Even when he gets what he wants and becomes a cop once again, not even an hour later he falls back into the warm liquid trap. And every single season, he goes after the boys. Whether it's trying to kill them or imprison them, the only true exception was the newest season so far, season 12. Which is also sadly the last time we'll see John Dunsworth in action as Jim Leahy due to his untimely death. But this remaining time on the show is spent more positively, with him and Randy after close to 20 years of battling it out with the boys together, giving up. They decide to try and reconcile, even succeeding in the end as the two groups spend the season finale together as friends, instead of enemies. I found this detail to be beautiful in a way. As John Dunsworth died and was laid to rest, his character got to rest as well. Not as a hateful angry old drunk, but as an old man who just got tired. Tired of the fighting, and wanted peace. And he achieves that. He gets to be friends with the boys, and in the animated series, he gets to say goodbye to his true love, Randy. Not with letters or a will he left behind, but through the liquor. So as he was reborn into it in Season 3, Leahy died and lived on as the liquor in a positive way. Showing us that Jim Leahy, and in a small part John Dunsworth, has been, and always will be, the liquor. You know what the best currency is? And I just thought about this yesterday. The best currency, the most valuable of all, is gratitude. And if... When you're dead, you're dead. But you're not quite so dead if you contribute something.